What's going on, Straight Talk Faithful? Your host, your boy, George Mackay, back in studio. And today is a very special one. Today, I consider it to be the ECW One Night Stand of Wrestling Podcast. That's right, for one night only, we've gone deep back in the archives to bring back the original trifecta, the original family, the animal, and the voice, back in the Straight Talk Studios for one night only. This is crazy. It's like the Beatles reunion all over again, but super less... You know, worth a lot more, less money anyways, for sure. <laughs> What's going on, guys? How are you? <laughs> Good, man. I'm really happy to be back on the podcast again. Thank you, sir. Hey, what's up going on, everybody? Chilling, busy with school, happy to be here, happy to see everybody, excited to get this done. Right, so this episode is, as we did a couple, you and I did, way back when, we called it the State of the Union, where we talked about the wrestling business as a whole, Everything from, you know, 2019, I guess mid-2019 to when things kind of the landscape changed to where we are now and the collective, you know, thoughts of everything. Oh so, boy, a lot's changed. So, 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 so much has changed ever since AEW, NWA, all of it. Now you have so many options of, there's just too many options now to, to watch in wrestling. It's, it's fantastic. It does give you a definite, very uh, plethora of choices yeah. to make and we're going to get into some of those choices. Right off the bat, I think the first choice we should discuss is, uh, you know, this new little baby sister that you and I spoke a lot in very depth detail. We even did a whole episode on it, on what we thought AEW was going to be in the landscape and how everything would change. And uh, I'd like to say that I think we were pretty much right on that. In fact, the landscape changed hugely. Yeah, I feel like we're bang on with all of our predictions. of all, Well, almost. I don't remember all of them per se, but I can tell you definitively that there was a lot of prediction that went on that we were talking about that is currently going on today. Yeah, I mean, you know, for making Jericho the forefront of the company as your champion, or Le Champion, as he likes to be called, uh, to the inner circle, which I did not see coming. I don't think anybody predicted that he would start a fraction, or sorry, faction. Ah, see? Memories. Ah. Didn't, <laughs> wouldn't start a faction right off the bat, but then, of course, you have the Nightmare Collected, which, you know, fell through the rafters. It didn't work. Brandy Rhodes just isn't built for voicing on TV. She's built for walking out there and supporting her husband, as we saw with the 10 lashes that happened a few weeks ago. But I guess my first point, my first question would be... Uh, to both of you, is that in terms of where 2019, mid-2019 started, when we saw AEW kind of take shape, we saw the first pay-per-view, we saw how great that was, then it built for more pay-per-views, then we got the TV deal in place, and now there's been this Wednesday Night War thing, which isn't a thing, and everybody says it's not a thing, but it's clearly a thing, because everybody's watching the ratings, yet nobody's hitting a million, but yet both are still equally hitting decent numbers, 900,000, 800,000, and that's just because there's a lot of shit on on Wednesdays. Yeah. Wednesday's a bad day. There's a lot of, like, the Chicago's. My, my wife and I, we watch Chicago's when we're not watching wrestling. Thanks God for on-demand TV, or else we would miss NXT <laughs> altogether. It's true. When you're a parent, and you're a podcaster, and you got all this other stuff, sit down and watch, you know, Crooked Cops and Crooked Firefighters something else, in the city of Chicago. Sometimes. You just yeah. kind of have to do that. Yeah, I don't watch Chicago Med, though. I'm not a big fan of hospital shows. Everybody in the state seems to have a heart issue on those fucking shows. They're always <laughs> dying. Somebody's got diabetes. Well, you know, you're in school for medical. I'm talking to the voice. So I guess my, that's my question. The landscape of wrestling and how it all changed from when we saw AEW and then we, you know, later on in the year we saw NWA. They're kind of all these different options as we discussed in the beginning. So what are your thoughts on that, Michelle? I think that maybe even like the first AEW pay-per-view, I think that kind of opened up the floodgates to these other promotions to really see, okay, you know what? We can still go out there, we can do our thing and, and do it just as big as other people or put on just as much of a spectacle, per se, as other people, um, depending on budgets and whatnot. But it really opened up the floodgates, in my opinion, because now, um, especially the ending of last year, beginning of this year, there's so much wrestling to watch. There's everyone's different styles. Um, you can watch whatever you want. Like there's, there's so much wrestling to cater to each kind of fan now right with all the promotions so i think it really just opened up the floodgates now it's 2020 you know the ball is kind of rolling i'm excited to see where it, it goes in the next let's say five years well um aw just signing another tv deal with tnt is really uh, is, is an incredible sign that 2024 it's, right still 2024 now i believe I it's yeah. 2024 that they signed another they signed a three-year deal um, well, there's job security for you. <laughs> and yeah, um, the fact that it, the fact that they they signed on for um, another for for another turnover is just incredible. The fact that NWA is doing what they're doing. Billy Corgan took his 
thing from Impact and how that completely failed, moved that right over to NWA, took all of his ideas that he wanted to do with Impact, now he's just doing them. And everything, and uh, uh, Dave Lagana, I believe, uh, is, is uh, the other owner. And they're both collaborating on these amazing ideas, along with, of course, everyone else who was in the mix. And I imagine a lot of it has to do with the actual wrestlers themselves that are going out there and actually singing their own songs and creating their own music. Um, AW in the same respect, and that's why I'm loving both of those companies, is it's having an option for both of those the both of those companies to be able to move in the directions that they want to move into and it's not just revolved around unfortunately with the state of affairs that is currently going on with wwe still with one man running absolutely everything running four shows that compared to which is ironic because the fact that um in the fourth show uh is still 205 they're they're still doing this 205 live thing and yet at the same time now making nxt championship the 205 championship so very confusing on uh, so many fronts of a lot of things that unfortunately you look at those two products and then you look at the, the wwe product and not a lot of things really tend to make sense um and so there's a, a lot more um, there, there's, a, a, I, I hear the talk constantly about how WWE still needs to improve. And I think that's horrible to be in that position after doing it for that many years and then seeing this, these two companies absolutely flourishing. So it's, um, it, it, it's a really strange paradox of, of wrestling to really be living in, of having the most gross conglomerate company in the mix, having a lot of people wondering when they're going to turn themselves around and do better and wondering when things are going to be better for them. Um, and then in turn having, uh, these other companies growing and having, watching them build and, and constantly go, and, and going up. I um, mean, and, and in terms of what you got going on with destiny, what's going on with all of the independence, um, like Michelle said, like you said, like I've said, there's just, though, the best way to wrap this up in a neat little bow is, man, it's so awesome to turn on my TV now and see something of at least one thing of everything that I've ever wanted in wrestling to come back from the last 20 years and 30 years and it's all here now and you can just go you can pick anything you want now you don't have to resort to a wwe network which from what i understand is actually turned itself totally nickelodeon that that's all also kind of going in the can at this point so um at the, <laughs> the bottom line is um i don't mean to crap all over wwe it's just a lot of stuff that i just keep hearing about I, and I keep watching from its own product that I keep seeing from a 30-year... And this is just honestly just coming from a 30-year fan that's loved the product so much that I do wish the best for it. And I do hope that a lot more things actually do turn itself around in terms of that, you know, the bad comment section. Um. <laughs> well, there, there has been some, some good things with those other companies that you did mention. I mean, Billy Corgan leaving Impact. Yeah, okay. It, it didn't work for him there. And what he's done in NWA, you can see that he actually does have a mind for the business and he knows what he's doing. Yes. But in terms of impact, you really can't shy away from those guys and what they're doing. No, it's not getting anymore, signed. because now it's, now it's turned itself around. And, and sorry, who is... Uh, you, 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 you well, Scott, Scott Demore, Scott Demore, Scott Demore yes. and Gail Kim, yes. they uh, they really have changed escape, plus getting signed with Axis. Like, yes. that's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. And Impact Plus was a great streaming service. I mean, I can't beat the price point. I have it. I like it. It goes back to all the archives, plus all those indie guys that we've raved about. They've all been on there. You can go search Aiden Prince and find every match that he's fought in Impact. Yes. You can go search Alexia Nicole. She's another great one. You can go search uh, guys like Flares or guys like the Hot Stepper who have all yeah. had these one-off matches that are, are getting invited back and the call-up in the future is bright. Because if you're a Canadian wrestler and you want to be put on a global scale, like right now they're, they're just in the tail end of their Mexico tour. Yeah. Which I give them huge credit for because to go in as a North American company into a place like Mexico that has nothing but the finest and best wrestling. And I'm not going to say Lucha Libre wrestling. I'm not going to put that in a bubble. We yeah. already know what the wrestling is. If you're any kind of a wrestling fan, you know what kind of wrestling is there. Yes. But the fact that a North American company can go in, be so welcomed, put on such great shows, and you got guys like we've raved about and repped about from day one, like The Walking Weapon and Ethan Page who are killing it over there as tag champions. Exactly. They're almost over 400 days as tag champions. You can't, you can't teach that. No. You, can't, you just can't. It's, no. it's, it's born and bred. And the good thing about Scott DeMore and Gail Kim is they have noticed this Canadian talent. They're helping it flourish. And finally, we can say, here, we have a platform. Yeah. We, as Canadian fans, have a platform, somebody to strive to. So if you want to go see a guy like Aiden Prince, you want to go see a guy like, jo like Josh Alexander, like Ethan Page, like Cody Diener, like Madman Fulton, so many options, they're there. And I feel like they're, they're taking the brunt of turning a company around from what once, once, once was uh, considered, quite frankly, 
uh, Purgatory. It was literally wrestling Purgatory. Not long ago, this was considered Impact Wrestling. If you were going to go anywhere else to fail, you went to Impact. That was literally it. But however, what these guys are doing, and what I'm loving about this, is the fact that they're turning this company around. They're bringing it back out of what was once Wrestling Purgatory. And now it's actually a show really genuinely worth watching. I'm actually really loving I'm loving everything about the product that they're putting out. Well, and also the fact that they broke down huge history barriers by crowning the first female heavyweight exactly. champion. Yeah. Exactly. And that, that's another barrier broken down in this evolution of women's wrestling. Yes. I, if, as long as Vince McMahon and everybody else could open the floodgates, that would be great. And then, you know, you, you go, and I, when I had my interview with Sienna, we talked a lot about NWA and what they're, what, what they're doing. And one of the things she mentioned that she loved is the creative freedom. Even though the product is very um, nostalgic, if you will, yeah. because of the way they do it, the way it's filmed, the way it's set up. It's very they much, write their own music. it's very, yeah, they write their own music. Their characters are allowed to flourish. They are PG, but there's a little bit of edge to the PG. So it's almost like, yeah. I want to say, and I, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but I'll say it anyways, classy NXT. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it as in it's polished, it's clean, where NXT is a little bit grungy. It's, and I don't mean grungy in a bad way, more but I think more, more grimy. Yeah. It's more grimy. Yeah. It's more realistic where I, I think the NWA product is a lot more polished just because of the nostalgic aspect of it. Yeah. But what they're doing over there, I mean, you got guys like Nick Aldis who are flourishing. You got, well, and Nick Aldis is not like a name that never flourished before. I mean, his name was on the map for a very long time, but at least now he has a platform. We don't have to see him in one-off events with ROH. We can actually see him on his own platform, his own weekly episodic show. Yeah. Yeah. And it's great to see. So I guess my next question is to pose, and that's another thing we could touch on. We could touch on the fact of the landscape of the women's evolution. I pose this question to you first, The Voice. Um, in terms of the women's evolution, seeing a female heavyweight champion, yeah. can you honestly say as a wrestling fan, as long as you've been a wrestling fan, you ever thought you would see the day come where you would see, like we thought it was almost there with China. We really did. But then Triple and H, then, Triple yeah. H, Bang, and Stephanie. From and from there, yeah. I never mm -hmm. thought I would see it. I mean, there's always that little bit of hope that you have of like you know what I really hope that this company can flourish and be all it can be and embrace every gender that it has you know what I mean and let each individual person flourish however their character and their story goes no matter oh um without having like a label of this is the women's title and this is the men's title well at least like, it's not a butterfly know? belt anymore things have changed oh my changed. god exactly which is you know what I mean you take the little steps in stride but to imagine where female wrestling is now, it's kind of incredible. From WWE to the you Ontario... You say it. Bra, bra panty pant matches, mud, mud matches. Those always made me so uncomfortable. Honestly, as a kid watching that, it made me so uncomfortable because... It made you hate, it made you hate being well, a woman, right? Because I was such a tomboy also it growing up, It made me hate up, being right? a woman too, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I was such a tomboy growing up, so like seeing that stuff made me feel weird... And then I would see how my dad would look at the women on TV when they're in those matches. And as, I'm like, I don't want to be seen like that, right. right? So it would kind of put me off. But to see the evolution, to see where it has all come right now, it's been incredible from, honestly, from watching. I just caught up on last week's Raw and SmackDown and all that stuff. There were a few highlight matches Sorry for you. the women. Sorry well, for you know you. what I mean, whatever. I'm not going to lie. The Natalia Asuka match, I actually really enjoyed just because it was more technical, and I, I love Natalia. I love seeing her in the ring and all that. But um, from, yeah, from WWE all the way to the Ontario indie scene, the matches that I've seen on some of the shows that I've been, like, incredible female talent that I, I'm just excited to see the progression because they are working their asses off, and honestly, I feel like they're working harder than the men are, like, in some cases. Not every single no, one, I, I, but, you know, I agree with you. for the opportunities because they're that. hungry for it, and they know, okay... If I need to, if I'm going to be treated like one of the boys, I need to train like one of the boys. I need to be as tough as one of the boys. So they're going to be hungrier. They're going to work harder for it, right? Mm -hmm. Not putting down anybody, but that's just how I see it in my head. That's how I've been. Of like, I've played on an all men's uh, soccer team before. I was the only girl, but to be the only girl on that team, I had to work my butt off. I had to have some skill. You know what I mean? So I give big kudos to those girls who are stepping in, in the in the ring, facing other female competitors and facing the male competitors as well that have been really I've seen some really great intergender uh, matches which I think is also another platform that females can use to say hey listen I'm just as tough as these guys I deserve that belt as long as the rest of the world you know kind of follows the path that impact has laid out right, right. and that yeah. was yeah. they they gave her the belt amongst a ton of controversy 
that it happened yes. literally that weekend. Yes. Oh, was she she yeah. won. All of it for she won the belt. Week after. Yeah. <laughs> there was a ton of controversy, it but I, and I thought they were going to pull it. I really Nothing. did. I thought I that I thought was going to so get met well. with either. I did. I, I thought, thought it was. So. I thought it was going to be pulled, but it didn't. They actually went with the storyline the way they did, and I guess I'm going to pose this question to you now, sir. Um, amongst all this controversy, there was a snippet about a couple days after the Impact event where Tessa was crowned the champ. Booker T came out with a statement. I shared it on the Straight Talk page. You go back and find find that if you. That's ironic. If you did. You're going to ask me about this because I was just thinking about that as the main source of. Controversy and that's why it's one night only. Moment. We uh, <laughs> we we've always gelled that way. We always knew right. what each other was thinking. So Booker T released a statement, and I'm not going to read the whole. I don't remember all the statement, but I do remember one line, and the one line I remember was a kind of a line that I was like. I have a lot of respect for you, but now you've kind of changed my opinion of you. And that one line being, now that she's won the woman's, now that she's won the heavyweight right. championship, uh, any man that beats her will now be considered, I guess, less of a superstar in his opinion, which I disagree with. But the other point that he made is if she ever does lose the belt and then decides to step back to the woman's division, she really can never lose again. Because how does, if she does decide to take a step back, how can any other woman in that division whoop her when she was hanging with the boys for a substantial title run? And I'm sure it's going to be a substantial title run. The only way she should lose this is a full year from date of conception. Anything less than that, in my own personal opinion, is a slap in the face to t- Tessa's hard work and effort to get where she got. So my question to you, Steve, do you agree with Booker T's statements or the certain statements that I highlighted? Or yeah. do you disagree? Um, I agree with some of it. There's part of it. There's this part that isn't really much of what I agree with. And this is, this is quote from Booker T. I mean, big ups to Tessa Blanchard because she's good. She's really good. She's really good at what she does, but this is the worst idea that impact wrestling ever had in the history of the company. It really is. It's really that bad. It's worse than paying me 10 grand for a six hour power commercial that never aired. So basically, um, in the long and the short of it, uh, and th- this is this is another quote that's coming from. I mean, who's the top? Who's the top guy in the company right now? I can I cannot see the man Becky Lynch wrestling Samoa Joe or Brock Lesnar. I mean, this is the worst idea in the history of wrestling. It really is. And to throw it out there like that, it's the only way I can really be. It can really be thrown out. And it makes me question and wonder. You know, is somebody tr- is somebody is is, is somebody trying to blow this thing uh, up on purpose. It's like somebody said, let's see how bad we can mess this up. So, um, essentially, what the problem is with the men is the fact that how in the world can you see a woman going in there and beating up all of your big men? And my question to the men who throw out that absolutely, absurdly stupid question, and it is the stu- one of the stupidest questions I've ever heard in my life, because of the fact that we are watching Ricochet about to go and fight Brock Lesnar for the world title. We have watched AJ Styles go in there and fight for the world title. We've watched Rey Mysterio go in there I actually just watched that Rumble. I did, for- I did just watch that Rumble. Awesome Rumble. Great Rumble. Right? Like... <laughs> He he's won the whole. He they put what they put him in there number one. Number one, 60, 62 minutes and uh, thirty five seconds. Yeah. Something yeah. crazy. Other than Ric Flair, which is the number one recommended Royal Rumble in history to go watch. You talk to any Royal Rumble buff, they will tell you go watch Ric Flair destroy everybody and win the world title in sixty minutes. With a tear Plus, in my eye. With a tear <laughs> in my eye. This is the greatest day of my life. And it really was for wrestling fans and for wrestling fans alike. Now they get a chance to go back and watch that. Getting a chance to go watch little, tiny, <laughs> like two foot Rey Mysterio go in there and kill everybody and have the heart of a lion to go in there and go win the thing. I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, screw your big, tall, muscular, muscly, muscle men that you love so much. I know you think they're great and that they can beat people up and they got big muscles that can hit people real hard. But I can tell you for a fact that there is nothing more powerful in the world than watching somebody go in there and beat the crap out of the big bully. And that's what the hell we just watched in the story with Tessa Blanchard. That was literally a story of the big bad bully that came in 
with Sammy Callahan that nobody wants to be anything in this industry whatsoever and wants them all for everyone wants them fired and they what does impact do they bring him in they make him the top guy because he's the worst human being he's classified he looks like the worst human being on paper in the world and then you had hero Tessa Blanchard come in and and win the world title and be the big hero and get her and, and get her five minutes and, and get her get her ten minutes in the ring the way what she rightfully deserved um when somebody works their ass off to get where they're at, I don't really care um, how much people really think what they deserve and what they don't. Um, you're not them. Uh, they're not, you're not the one who worked their ass off, and you're not the one that's standing in front of Scott Demore crying while Scott Demore is trying to tell her, "Don't worry about all the comments and don't worry about any of that. You are, you are, you are awesome, and you are gonna flourish, and you are gonna be amazing." And then Tessa, with tears in her eyes, looking up at the, looking up at Scott, going, "Do you really think so?" Because she doesn't even understand what the hell she's in right now. Because this is literally a, such a big deal and such a pivotal human, such an incredible moment in history that she should actually be able to step back for a second and not look at any comment section, but a, but very very humbly be able to just step back and reap the rewards and reflect on every, hold that title and look at it and go, "God damn it." We did it, and we actually we, we, we made the biggest history in, the, in terms of any history moment that we could make for women. And I think it's the greatest time for, for women to be able to just go off and be able to come up with any idea that they want, never think about whatever anybody else will, will hold them back from whatever it is, because if they do, guess what? You can just hold a big middle finger right in their face and walk right past them and go do whatever you want. I love what women's wrestling is today. It's amazing. No, I agree, and but I also agree. I, I agree, and I disagree with one point. Yeah, you know, Sammy Callahan, he's had his controversies, he's had his moments, he's had his definite dark spots. But I think classy on his part to hold that title from Brian Cage to giving it giving it up to Tessa. From what I understand, knowing this that was a big idea on his end. This yeah, was like his he was setup. that. So yeah, that was my point. Was that it was it's a huge moment in terms of the evolution of the sport. I'm not going to say the evolution of women in the sport because they've already evolved well past anything that we could have expected 10 years ago. Yes. And they've, they've broken down so many doors and barriers and will continue to do so to the point where, I mean, I, I rep one of my favorite promotions in the indie scene right now is that poster behind my wall with all those lady signatures on it, Revolution Women's Wrestling. I've been to two of those events and they are dynamite. What Chris is doing over there, what Spinelli and Rebel are doing over there, Rebel's a former you know M Impact employee. Uh, it, it's impressive, and uh, for Impact to be the one to take the bull by the horns and say, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give this we're gonna give this this lady a shot, and we're gonna give her the shot the right way." And the story was built perfectly; everything was built perfectly, and that and that is a big credit to uh, the brains behind the operation. You know, Scott Demore and Gail Kim and everything they're doing, and Sammy being as classy as he was to being the one guy that was willing to drop the title, like you yeah. said, setting up the the big bully moment perfectly, and the hero prevailed. And not only is she is, is she a hero and an inspiration to women, but she's a hero and an inspiration to men. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of men who who fight through that all the, all the time in their lives. And now she's she can literally be a beacon for everybody to say, "Hey, I've done it. If I've yeah. done it, if I can reach the top, you can reach the top." And wherever you, your top might be. Yeah. And uh, oh crap! I had one more. I had one more awesome point, that, uh, but I, I I can't remember what it is. So never mind. <laughs> we'll circle back if it pops we'll in your back head. To it. Uh, in terms of, I mean, we have to touch on, all right, go ahead. I remember it now. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that I commend all four of them and impact wrestling. I commend also the other people on the roster for taking all of the heat that they took after that, for having to go through all of that and to deal with some of the worst comments that i've ever read in my entire life well, and negative the, and positive there yeah, were some there were, there were very, some positive, very a lot of positive but everything that i remember from that and i promise you i know that's going to be the same thing for tessa and i know it's going to be the same thing for scott it's going to be the same thing for a lot of people that when they look back on that moment the very first thing that they're going to remember is how much heat they had to take for dealing with that for how for going all out there and, and put that moment out there it's like what paul Heyman has always said about roster members who just very simply you just take a chance and if you happen to get fired for it then at least you knew that you t you gave it your best shot and that you did what you knew was right, even though you knew there was going to be a lot of other people that weren't going to like what you were going to do at the time. Well, so Vince McMahon really does. Vince McMahon does a that. billion and one things wrong, and he still has 
tons of money rolling in, except that billion dollars that disappeared. But we won't go there. We won't go there about the billion dollars that randomly yeah, disappeared. Just, a, just great, 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 great <laughs> shit for, from Impact. For like, That's what I was looking at the most out of all of it, was the fact that, yeah, gr- amazing that you won the championship, amazing history-making moment, amazing all the above. The most amazing part of it was how much they sat back and just took the ride and didn't comment on anything, didn't pull any punches, just let everyone else just make the comments and everything. Like I thought that was very classy of them. Well, and that's when you know you have a united roster, right? You have everybody looking at the same goal. And I think that's the mentality that they have over there. There's no division. There's no fighting. But let's talk about something interesting here. Let's talk about even though the WWE product is kind of at least the main roster product anyways. Actually, I'm not even going to say the main roster product because NXT is its own entity and its own roster in itself. Uh, Two out of the three parts of the two thirds of the roster if you will are uh it's a nosedive in terms of creativity in terms of everything uh the only bright spot in my opinion but that's because i really like the dark you know fucked up characters is the fiend i mean this whole thing he's got going with goldberg i think it's genius i i had a blast watching it i had a blast watching the whole mr rogers persona to the you know let me in at the end of it right the "Mm, let me in like that was pretty cool it was, for me it was pretty grimy just because I, I love the character and i love what they're doing and it's the best it's the best thing going in the wwe uh you know two-thirds yes uh perspective anyways mm-hmm. uh but i also i also got to give him credit uh where credit is due uh went into royal rumble with very low expectations actually thoroughly entertained uh i want to say for most of it like three quarters of it there was not a, a bad match in my opinion uh, and I wasn't excited about Brock Lesnar until I saw and I understood the story and I understood everything. And the fact that how he sold that kick, you know, how he, he put Drew McIntyre over. He sat there laid out for five minutes when we've seen Brock Lesnar get up numerous times after taking a kick like that. Yeah. I remember seeing a match that Sheamus gave him a kick like that. He got up 10 seconds later. Yeah. But the fact that he laid out there for 10 minutes really put Drew over. And that's surprising from a guy like Brock Lesnar, who doesn't put anybody over but Brock yeah. Lesnar. And then yeah. doing this shit where he's holding the apron after. and like Yeah, look at, look at like, like days they yeah, confused. Really, like selling it. Selling oh, it to the point. And I thought that was a genius story. And there were some yeah. emotional moments. I mean, I was never an Edge fan, uh, like a hardcore Edge fan. Right, but yeah. seeing him come back and be healthy, and now he's got this new deal in place. I think the number is astronomically absurd in what he was signed for. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to seeing him and Randy Orton at WrestleMania. I think it'll be, uh, I'm not going to say a barn burner or a show stealer, but I think it'll be a match that a lot of fans will just be genuinely excited to see because he's back in the ring. Yes, yes. I mean, anytime somebody has to retire early because of an injury, uh, it sucks. But we saw the return of Daniel Bryan and how well he's mm-hmm. flourished. Yeah. We've seen Edge now. Uh, I, from what I understand, Santino Morella, a.k.a. Anthony Corelli, and Paige went to the same doctor's that worked on Edge with the stem cell stuff in Columbia. And from what I understand, the results have been very positive. So it's like, you know, we're just waiting for the return of Paige. And I would love to see that because there's so many matches we never got to see. Never got to see Paige go at Becky. Never got to see Paige go at Charlotte. Never got to see the things that could have happened that did. Like, Paige did go at Charlotte, but the storyline was horrible. The match setup was horrible. And I think that's something that both of those women would love to forget. But in terms of one point that I was trying to make, two-thirds... Eh, they have their up and down flat line moments, if you will, heartbeat monitor moments. NXT has been the ever standing solid conglomerate. And in terms of that, so I pose this question to both of you looking at NXT now and what they're doing and how they're branding and producing these new stars. Like, yeah. Okay. Drew McIntyre. He got over Charlotte Flair. She got over Bianca Belair was more over than Charlotte Flair. I really thought for a split second, they were going to give it to Belair that night at the rumble. I mean, she now holds the official record. So, win or lose at Portland, I mean, this episode will air much after Portland, but win or lose at Portland, she is going to be a staple well beyond. We saw Shayna Baszler come up on Raw. She attacked Becky Lynch, so we already know the storyline is playing out for WrestleMania there. Becky does not have an opponent. Shayna Baszler is perfect, which also kind of sets up, hopefully down the line, the 4-4, four and four, which we've all talked about and hoped for, right? We hoped for it when the Mae Young Classic was going on, yes. when Baszler came out with her big, dumb forehead. I'm sorry, oh I don't like her. God. I don't. Um, but in turn, I like her as a performer. I just don't like anything else about her. But, um, right. I mean, she's got a bigger forehead than, you know, babies with no hair. Like, it's, wow, it's dangerous. It's almost like that Neanderthal uh, oh forehead. God. Is that wrong to say? I'm going to get heat for that, but that's fine. Tweet me. Underscore straight talk. Sorry, but, <laughs> she can beat up the whole world. <laughs> she can. No, she can't. She's a, she's a devil. Really she's a devil in the yeah, ring. Yeah. Her, her promo skills are uh, a little bit wanky, but. I get what it is. Um, in terms of, again, NXT, the ever consistent, uh, the ever, you know, evolution, evolving product that they have, uh, you see guys like Keith Lee. He also got yes. over. 
Keith Lee and Braun Strowman staring at each other. Keith Lee and Brock Lesnar staring at each other. Those were moments in time. Dude, Those were moments in time you could see down the line. That if, was like one of the highest YouTube clips of the whole next day. It was literally Keith Lee and Brock Lesnar. Whoa, big boy. And like, the, the who the F is this guy? And like, the, everything that Brock was doing to, to make Keith. And I was just looking at him. And I'm like, so many people are like, Brock's lazy. And I'm like, oh my God, he's trying so hard here to The white boy dance was, guys. was the best. Though. Yeah. When MB, and you know what? I feel bad for MVP. Let's touch on that for a second. MVP returns, just wants to show his son that this is where he's, you know, he, he yeah. start where he got his first, you know, big break, yeah. and it completely gets overshadowed by Edge, and not it not Edge's fault in any capacity. They no. just they bring him out. They don't even let him stand in the ring with Brock Lesnar before 15 seconds later. Yes. They throw him out. Luckily enough, they didn't let him overtake Santino's record. Santino still holds the record yeah. at one point <laughs> one point three seconds. I wasn't ready. I watched that rumble the other yeah, day too. We went ready. back. It was good times. But so my question being. In terms of the evolution of NXT and how great the product is there and how solid the product is and what a roster they have, the fact that they're still signing. And that's my question. Yeah. I'm just talking about Killer Cross. Recently signed, uh, went to the Performance Center. The Rock's daughter has also yeah, uh, yeah, been called up to the Performance Center. So I'll pose a question to you first. In terms of an oversaturated roster, as we already know, and NXT with very minimal TV time, two hours to really make something of yourself and really be put over. Like Keith Lee had been there for, from what I understand, almost a year and a half before he got over. Uh, Gargano and those guys were working dark matches. They still are working dark matches. I mean, you got guys, even AEW, you got wrestlers, talented wrestlers like Sonny Kiss still working dark. And we're going to get into reasons why I think yeah. that's happening in a second. Same thing with Nyla Rose. And I think okay. you both know where I'm going yes. with that. Because we talked about gender equality earlier. So this is the one point I want to bring up. But in terms of the ever consistency that is NXT. Mm-hmm. Do all these extra signings make sense? Where can you put these guys? Like if the Rock's daughter is, you know, a genetic, uh, uh, genetic, you know, second coming of her father, much like Charlotte Flair it's is of her father. Generation in WWE, and you know, right. That's phenomenal. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a ground barrier for sure. It's, it's a, it's another barrier broken. But is talent transmitted beyond three generations? The only reason I ask that is because we've only known two, three generation superstars: The Rock, Randy Orton. Yeah. So is. There are p- potential that a fourth generation superstar. I mean, AJ Lee said it. Talent's not sexually transmitted. Nikki Bella, yeah, shots, fired. shots fired. I remember that. That was a good that episode. Was a, that was a sick burn, man. <laughs> that was. That was a forget. The only door you've ever opened is the one to John Cena's bedroom. Ronda Rousey. That's another quote. But in <laughs> bang, terms, bang. in terms of of that, like, do these signings make sense? I mean, congrats to Killer Cross. Mm-hmm. Congrats to, you know, all the other signings that have happened because there were some that were overshadowed, but Killer yeah. Cross yeah, was yeah, the biggest Shanty one. Shanty Blackheart. Yeah. Yeah. That's Shanty Blackheart. And she, you know, but yes. she, she's carved out, she's carved out a, a huge portion of NXT for herself, setting up that battle she had with Baszler. You know there's going to be a second coming there. So do these she extra signings. the tank over. They let her ride in the tank and she got it over. Yeah, they also let, you know, Pete Dunne and, and Matt Riddle ride in the golf cart. And Pete Dunne looked that so was... unentertained. But it was, <laughs> great. was great. But in terms of, again, we've just mentioned all these talents that are coming out. And mm-hmm. NXT UK being solely focused on the UK side right. of things, you very rarely see NXT America cross over into the UK. Because right. they want to keep the brand separate. Yeah. Do all these extra signings make sense. Um, I be honest. Say, I want to say yes and no. Uh, I'll start with the no first because you already have so much talent, right? Like, how much more do you want to pool together? And then who's not like but so many people who's are the not head having honcho, right? Vince McMahon. He wants all the talent, even exactly, if he use exactly, it, he wants it. exactly. But in my head, it's also kind of smart too because think about it. There's injuries, family, you know what I mean. Right. There, there are things that happen, and there are hiccups, and then. So you you have a backup plan. But then there's also, what if these two people don't mesh? We have multiple people that we can kind of see who fits and who works and try to find somebody, their best partner. But at the same time, it's also, like, to me, it's just weird to try to have a conglomerate, like, as meant, like, you know, to try to pool all the, the talent that you can because... Just because you don't want them to get signed yeah, to another company, want, like you know, <laughs> it's, so, now, right? it's so it's chi- so like it's so childish. It's like when you're at when you're a toddler and you have your toys and like your friend comes over, or your cousin comes over, and you're not playing with. Are you your taking toy. a shot at my daughter right no, now no, because no, no, she holds no, all the no, toys no. for herself? No, I'm no. Just but you know, and you Saying know, your you're not paying is attention. Older than Vince McMahon is. <laughs> That's what she's they saying. both wear diapers. Ah, ah Zinga. 
but you're not paying attention <laughs> to your toy, Grand right? Vince the uses. second that kid picks up your toy, you're like, that's my toy. Right. I you know, what brand so of diaper Vince used. that might be the mentality, but I also like it's also a business. You want to make sure things are running smoothly if things are uh, being canceled last minute because we've have seen that with other promotions as well. Of you course, know, of course, last so, minute changes are part of the business. Exactly. Right. So you know, but I don't think that's a good enough excuse to to um, to validate why he's trying to talent pool the way he is. If that makes sense. No, I do. I, I completely yeah. agree. And what was the yes? So that was the no, but what was the yes part of it? The yes makes sense. Oh, yeah, just because if, if there are injuries and stuff like that. So like, you're, yeah, yeah. So okay, so that makes, was... Okay. It makes Perfect. sense if there are injuries, fam, like, you know, something happened, like, you know, Roman Reigns had cancer. So Murphy's Law, essentially. You want to have something in place for Murphy's Law. Or right. something. But it doesn't make sense in the way of, like, now you're just being a child because there are other promotions. And it's a huge name. Um... I'm sure it, it takes a lot to look at a con- to be sent a contract from WWE in the first place and to look at it and be like, you know what? No. You know what I mean? I'm sure that's a hard decision. You have to be so sure of yourself and who you are and where you're going to be like that's not worth it for me. So Right. I've I've asked that question a few times. I posed the question of where I set the whole scene, cereal bowl, bacon yes. eggs, whatever you eat. Five contracts in front of you. Who do you choose and who do you go after first? Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of that, we'll make this quick because I, I do have a couple other questions to ask. But in terms of that, oversaturated roster as WWE is, yeah. these, these extra signings make sense right now in this um, time period? To me, absolutely not. I don't think there's any reason to be signing anymore. I don't think there was any reason to be signing anymore, actually, uh, 10 years ago, quite frankly. Um, and I'm being... I'm being dead honest when I totally look at the amount of, um, let me put it in the best context because like we we do have some more questions and I don't want to go on. I could go on forever about how terrible of an idea this is because I've thought of it up and down sideways, left and right. Um, but bottom line is, um, the best possible way that I can put this is, um, why in the world would I want to watch 40 guys that are really good and 150 of them who suck? Why? Why do I want to watch that? Unfortunately, that's the reason why that there's not enough people on television and people don't want to admit that. They just want to think that they're not getting a chance. And then they get a chance and then they fuck it up and then they they get sent back to purgatory and then, oh, gee, they're not getting a shot. And it's like they got they got their shot, guys. No offense. They were allowed on TV. They sucked at it. They were given a microphone. They were given a match and they sucked at it. So they're like, OK, let's give them a microphone and let's see how they do. They sucked at that too. They put them on commentary. Oh, maybe commentary will help them out. Nope, they got all of those chances. Unfortunately, you just weren't paying attention to it and you were just thinking that they weren't getting an opportunity. When you watch them get an opportunity and they screwed it up and yet they're still allowed to work for a company that they actually should have been fired from a long time ago. Um, And those people are taking up spots along with additional people that are constantly getting signed. If you don't understand how terrible of an idea this is, it's like basically putting five times as much oil into your car than you actually need. And then you go and hit the gas and then all of a sudden your car explodes and you don't understand why. And it's like, guys, come on, um, understand the concept that when uh, you're watching something, you want people to be good. You want to watch people who have talent, and then you want to don't want to watch people who don't have talent. And unfortunately, you get to watch Mojo Rally, and then you also I knew get to watch. Mojo. That was in my head. I knew it. I fucking knew it. The first thing he was going to throw out was Mojo fucking Rally with the lightning bolts on his fucking face. Absolutely it's, agree. It's 100%. insane of these people that they allow to go on television that have failed so many times before, and then don't allow these people who <clears throat> do have talent and that do have that are waiting in the wings and are hoping to get an opportunity, and then you don't give that to the people who actually do deserve them or get it way too much later to the point where people don't even care anymore because they've already given up on the fact that they think that you're just not going to use them. And now that you are using them, oh, it's only going to be for a quick cup of coffee and then they're going to go right back to Roman Reigns again. And it's like, sorry, but that's what's wrong with your company in every way, shape, or form. I wish I could come into one of your board meetings and literally change your and fix your entire company because I know I could. Uh, but unfortunately, that's never going to be the case because Vince McMahon is always going to be the guy that's uh, losing more sleep, getting more dementia, and waking up more and more every day, screwing up more and more and more things with oversaturating and screwing up his company more and more and more and more every day. And I'm really sorry for people who believe in Vince McMahon and hope that one day that it's going to change. But I'm sorry, the more he gets older, the, wor- the every day that he keeps getting older, 
Brian Alvarez has been the one. He was the first one who put this out here. I've already thought about that. The fact that it's just going to keep getting worse because he's that mindset. Vince is still in this mindset, and every day that he keeps growing, it's just going to keep on getting worse in terms of that. More people are going to keep on getting signed, and your favorites are going to keep on getting pushed more and more to the back burner, unfortunately. Well, and then you 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 know you give TV time to Lana. Yeah, and uh, Bobby Lashley. I don't even want to talk about that loves story, them. I don't. Well, let's talk about that storyline because that's one of my unfortunate next questions. We have to talk about the storyline. It was a setup. It was a perfect setup, I'm and he followed through with it beautifully. Up. I could talk about Mojo Rawley, but we're not going to fucking do that. I'm not going to give him time on on my show. No, it's like that. <clears throat> I, I just again, okay, the, the, but let's. The so up. Yes, so that's how enthusiastic let's, we are. Let's let's about. let's just let's. And I, I, I'm actually only I'm going to pose this question myself, and this is and, and let me know if you agree or disagree with it. But this is this is what I see with that storyline. It um, it gives Bobby Lashley TV time, probably TV time agreed to in his contract. Uh, it gives Lana a platform for her to work because God knows she can't work a wrestling ring to save her life. Uh, and it also breaks up Rusev and Lana, which has to happen all the time. We saw it with Macho Man and Elizabeth. Then they came back together. We saw all these things. I'm not saying they're going to reenact that storyline because that after all this, it just makes no sense. Yeah. But in terms of um, breaking Rusev away to kind of try to reshape his character... I do see why it was done. Do I agree with how long and how drawn it's been? Absolutely not. There's been way too much TV time given to these three people, and I don't understand why. Uh, but for some reason, there is somebody out there that likes the product, because if you do do your research and you do watch all the message boards and stuff, now granted, WWE's message boards are definitely clouded. Uh, the comments are definitely paid for. You can see that when they're written, because they're written like perfect, like perfect English. Not a single spelling mistake or grammatical error or yeah, run-on no, sentence. No, no. You know they're, they're like, like oh, perfect. This person is- they yeah, they stop. capitalize. They yeah. capitalize yeah, at the start of every sentence. Yeah, their yeah. punctuation is like their their shit is it's fucking perfect. Yeah. So their message board's definitely clouded. But in terms of stuff like this, where you see these bad storylines, and let's make the answer very quick: no, yes or no answer, because we got to move on to the next question. Yeah. But when you see these oversaturated storylines happen, as your head, I mean, do you blame? Can you solely blame Vince? Because, yes, we understand the creative process of WWE. Somebody brings a storyline to him. He sits there. Uh, he looks it over. And then he says, yeah, okay. Let's move forward with it. Or he says, yeah, no, let's not move forward with it. So in terms of that, I mean, because at the end of the day, wrestling, at least in Vince McMahon's portion of stuff, wrestling is a soap opera. Actually, in a lot of things, it's, a, it's an episodic soap opera. It really is. It re- re- <clears throat> Excuse me. It really, really is. Storylines get ended and started almost at a distance it used to be four weeks leading up to the pay-per-view then the pay-per-view squash it then new storylines would start yeah. now they just don't draw any storylines so do you agree with these outlandish storylines that they're doing and does a storyline like this set back the evolution of women in the business that's my question does a storyline like this and let's just make it a yes or no answer or i'll give you like 30 seconds each and then yeah, we got to move on but seconds. okay do you believe it sets the evolution of the females in this sport, the female superstars, back? I'll give you your 31st. Um, no, I don't think it sets uh, the women back. I think it just sets individuals back. I think it's uh, one, more, one more time of exactly what I was literally just talking about. People who suck and have sucked for a long, 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 long time, but yet Vince seems to think that there's talent in there when it sucks. Everyone knows it sucks. Everyone's told and talked about how long it sucked, and unfortunately, there's still wiggle room to try to figure out how to not make this thing suck. End of story. Okay. Well, a lot of sucks in there. (laughs) Michelle, your 30 seconds starts now. Okay, uh, no, I don't think it sets uh, anything back because, um, like everybody knows, there's pretty girls who are good at being pretty, then there's also, like, girls, pretty girls who can fight, and then, like, you know, there's an amal- amalgamation of both or whatever. There's different types. So I don't think it sets back any any kind of female evolution. I just feel like it's putting her in the past. Okay, I agree with that. My, I'm actually going to use only 15 seconds. As a father, uh, just a father of daughters, but even if I had a son, as father of two daughters who do watch the product with me on a regular basis or a semi-regular basis when we do get the opportunity, right. uh, it, sets, it sets back my opinions of the business for them because I see one minute somebody like Becky Lynch who's almost carried the title for a full year, and then I see somebody like Lana getting way too much TV time. And for what reasons? Yes, her booty's banging. She's beautiful to look at. But it's just, it's bad ideas like this that are why he's losing fans. 
Becky Lynch is actually a really good example too. That's another example of someone who's an individual who is taking themselves, who was once a person who was up here, and now you've taken your own self, and now you're all the way back here. Because now you're talking about how you don't have an opponent, and how you're the best, and how all this heel stuff that's coming out of her mouth about... Well, every character has to change and evolve. The heel turn was bound to happen. Oh, it was bound to happen. She's a good guy, but yeah, going out there talking about how, oh, everyone sucks and how I have no competition. And he, 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 look at me. I'm the champ. I can just kick my feet up and I can do whatever I want. Everyone hates it to the point where it's. Well, that's why Baszler got the huge pop she did when she attacked her from behind. It made made logical sense sense. for the storyline. Exactly. It just took one year for. I just watched. the ability for a person within one year's time to take themselves from whoa you were like the underdog humble cool all the above and now all it took was for you one year to be champion to like kick your feet up and talk about how everyone sucks and how you have no competition and yes it basically just shows that it just went straight to her head right and anybody can see that of like okay so you were so humble you're such a sweet girl and you got this title, you had this opportunity, you know, you became Becky two belts, whatever the bullshit, and now you think you're hot shit? You know you're cold diarrhea. Let's <laughs> let's get back to facts. That literally could know? have been actually like, put any better. I'm not saying that really, but but you know what I mean of like you But now hold on. Okay, I we we uh, I'll give another couple of minutes on this cuz the subject's interesting. The character itself, guys, if we all remember, when she evolved herself into the man, yeah. She became an over the top yes, cocky motherfucker. Uh, I, the man yes, won the title. Yes. So Absolutely. the man character has been around for a yeah, year. She yeah. was cocky before she won the belt. When she started getting win after win after win. Hey, you're on a win streak. Look at my boys, the Raptors right now. 15 in a row. I mean, yeah. life is good. Absolutely. But when you're and you can have that swagger, you can have that cock in the walk if you will. Yeah. But the man character was always designed to be cocky. Now she's just met somebody who's equally as cocky, which is in my opinion, the best it's setup beautiful. for WrestleMania yeah. this far, next to Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar, which yeah. will happen and will be phenomenal. Absolutely. But, I mean, I see it for what it is. She has to be over the top cocky because Shane is over the top cocky. How do you, how do, what beats cocky? More cocky. That makes sense. Absolutely. Humble does not yeah. be cocky. If I'm humble and, and I'm a humble Drew McIntyre, yeah, look at me, I'm Scottish and I won and I'm here. Great. But what comes out next? The Absolutely. beast incarnate. The man calls himself the beast fucking incarnate. It's what we were Absolutely. so it, it mad makes with Bailey sense. about, right? Like that she was always so like uh, dark, dark Bailey. Know? Dark Bailey. I don't like either though. The hair. I, you I cut don't your. Like hair you cut part. your hair, and all of a sudden you don't give a shit. Yeah. That you want to talk about a character evolution that's fucked up. That's character evolution that's oh, fucked up. Absolutely. You cut your hair, then all of a sudden my favorite part of your whole fucking entrance goes away. Absolutely. How dare you get rid of the fucking huggers? <laughs> I'm serious. I, I was pissed off. I literally did it. I love when she's come out and uh, oh fuck. There they are. They're amazing. Uh, the wacky wobbly windmen. Yeah, they were fantastic. The Bailey you take the thank you. That's what they were called. Okay, thank you. The Bailey buddies. But you take that part away, and then you cut your hair, and all of a sudden you're uh, you're a she demon. Emo. Fuck, let me in. Like Jesus, are you the fiend's wife? What happened? Like that's what I'm saying. So cocky beats cocky. So I get I get the storyline. I get the evolution. And this has actually been as far as WWE sucking next to the fiend this year. The man has been a pleasure to watch. In my opinion, absolutely. the man has been a pleasure to yeah. fucking watch. The man watch. has absolutely been a pleasure to watch. It's just the fact that when you're a good guy and you're talking about how you can go out there and go beat the crap out of how uh, you have no more competition left and all this, that, and the rest of it. Um, what would be the deal if I were coming in here and I was re- and, and I got myself a record contract a year ago and then all of a sudden a year later I come in and I talk about how like, oh, dude, I'm totally up for a Grammy. My album's the best. My album is the best thing ever. There's nobody's album that's better than mine. I swear to God, if anybody even thinks that they can write a better album than me, I guarantee you they're full of shit. There's no way that they can do that. Storyline already happened. It was back. It's the best. And, but when you have an asshole that's coming in and talking about how their album is the best and how they're the best, you can, you can actually understand that because you get what a jerk this person is. But when you have a nice person who's coming in and doing all of this, that's where it's, thro- it's throwing so many people off, man, and it's basically getting to the point where it's taking that individual who was once an amazing individual and basically putting them in a lower position of where they're... It's basically talking themselves out of the building at this, at this point. And what I've been watching over this last six months with Becky Lynch, pretty much, and it, it's been really unfortunate. And with a lot of cases within this oversaturated roster where it's like, oh, you're going this way one minute... And then all of a sudden, holy crap, it only takes literally a couple of weeks for you to just completely talk yourself right out of the, right out of the building. We've given the, given the wrong lines and given the wrong direction from whatever's going on back there 
when it, there's a right direction, and then all of a sudden, holy crap, you're, you just took this person, and now you put them in this totally derailment. Yeah, you're on the highway, and then you make a fucking weird they left turn. they have to go out there yeah. where to fix themselves. <laughs> all right, well, we've talked, you know, this whole episode's been fantastic, is what I knew it was going to be, for one night only. Uh, we've talked about so much, but one thing I do want to pose, I know he's been licking his lips about this one the whole time, because now we're going to touch on AEW very quickly, because then we got to wrap it up. Uh, but AEW, uh, we can thank everything that's happened in 2019 to... Uh, yeah, you know, TNT, to Cody Rhodes, to Kenny Omega, to the Young Bucks, to Chris Jericho, to everybody, to Tony Khan, to everybody, uh, and his dad, whose name I can't remember. I apologize for that. I'm going to get heat for that too. Tweet me. I don't care. Uh, everything that's happened with that, we can credit this amazing last six months in the world of wrestling to AEW, and that's a fact. That's absolutely a fact. Because once there was competition, uh, we all know Vince thrives during competition. Now, has he thrived the last six months? No. But there have been bright spots, beacons of hope. Through all the crap, there's been a couple tidbits I can at least pick out at least once a month where I was like, shit, you know what? That was an entertaining Raw or that SmackDown was really good. And of course, I mean, the Fox deal just solidified even more money. And the XFL is actually really good. I watched the first week and it's actually not bad. Okay. They've gotten completely away from everything they did wrong the first time around. And it's just extreme football. That's all I've heard. It, it really is fantastic. So good, good on Vince McMahon for writing his wrong there nothing about it was wrestling related which is exactly the way it needed to be and i've got a lot of, i've heard a lot nothing but a lot of people being excited that there's football in between football yeah which yeah. is what, what nice. every football yeah. fan wants so in terms of aew we'll make it very quick uh, uh bright spots for me and this is all i want to touch on bright spots negative spots bright spots for me uh the evolution of mjf uh, the uh, resurgence of chris jericho on the mic cutting probably the best promos i've seen uh since the list and that's just, I'm talking WWE stuff. The list, I love the list. I mean, that's because he was with, you know, my doppelganger, KO. Love that man. Um, it, it, the resurgence there, the resurgence of stars coming out uh, everywhere from Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, to anybody in the inner circle. Uh, the people they brought in and how they've worked them. The Dark Order, Butcher and the Blade. I've loved how every, every new star has been introduced to the fold. Uh, negative spots, for sure. Uh, camera work. I'm a big fan of cam work, and they consistently screw up. Uh, JR, not even going to go there. I love you, dude, but stick to your podcast. Your days of commentary are unfortunately over. I will even say this. I'm more of a Tony Schiavone fan, and that's a hard pill for me to swallow because he is absolutely horrible. But in AEW, he's, he's the JR, and JR is now fucking Michael Cole. And that's a hard pill for me to say. It really is. Yeah, you got oh, tears in your eyes. With a tear in my eye. Uh, and All also, right, one big negative one big negative spot. Uh you talked, you brought it up, and I guess we'll go to you next. Yeah. Gender equality. It's a fucking farce. Sonny Kiss, first openly out there, you know, gay wrestler. Wrestling after dark matches. What the fuck is that? Because Sonny Kiss Incredible. is hands down one of the best talents. Incredible. I've had an op opportunity to see uh, him at very, very intimate settings, and he delivers every time. The fact that they're not utilizing him properly makes me sick. Nyla Rose, first transgender wrestler. Yeah. Uh, fantastic talent. Should be in the men's division with the big boys uh, because she's that damn good. And the women's division is horrible. Your, your champion, I don't know. I get why, because Kenny Omega and her were tight. Kenny Omega and her maybe, I don't know, just leave it off the table. They're women's champion right now. The, Br no, Britt Baker's not the no, women's no. champion. Uh, Riho. Riho, thank you. Thank oh, you very no. much. They're tight. Um, <clears throat> When he would do intergender matches, yeah, she was his yeah, tag yeah, partner. Yeah, 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 yeah. But she's so she's so young. She was so young when they started wrestling. Come on now. Oh, you know what? That calm. Uh, now too much is going through my mind. Let's get back to what we're talking. All about. right. So that's <laughs> that's my opinions on AEW: the bright spots and the negative spots. And there are negative okay. spots. Okay. Uh, work your cameras better. Jr.'s got to go. I love him, but he's got to go and start utilizing the talent that should be utilized. I get it. You're not putting belts on Cody. You're not putting belt. Well, you did put a belt on Kenny and um, uh, Adam Page. And it's great to see Adam Page flourishing. But you're taking steps back. As much as you're evolving, in my opinion, you're taking steps back. I will, however, say kudos to Cody. Ten lashes. Yeah. Respect. Oh, my God. Uh, let's go with you, and then I'm going to okay. – we'll end it off with the animal. Okay. Um, you know what? I have to agree with everything you said. The JR comment, JR is like – no, my love. Is. I know Absolutely. he's my, but you know, when you gotta call a spade a spade, my dude. You no, have to. I know when when it's t like you know when you've run your course, when anything has run its course, you know it's done. So 
it's just my heart that hurts for that. But yeah, I absolutely agree with everything you said about that. I I love the the way that they've introduced characters. I love the the uh, the matches that they've put on. How they're kind of mix match mix matching everybody together. There's always something interesting going on. There's always a little bit of being the elite in each episode of Dynamite. Like you know the jokey jokey stuff. Um, but then I have noticed as well. Like yeah, sometimes with the camera work, Jr. Bless his soul. Um, and uh, and yeah. again, underutilizing because their yes. roster is yes. nowhere near oversaturated, and no, they're not no. using the talent yes. that I think they should. Exactly. Be. Yeah, yeah, I really yeah. do. I do too. Okay. Yeah, what do you got, Steve? Um, all the things that you touched on, I think, are absolutely correct. Uh, um, I feel. Uh, <laughs> I feel it every single time, and I really hate feeling it every single time. But God damn it, Cody's entrance is way too long. Um, <laughs> Kenny's uh, Kenny's entrance, uh, Kenny Omega's entrance, is way too long. I don't know why I'm watching vignettes of him touring Japan before he's about to walk out to go wrestle. Like I'm, I'm supposed to be getting away from what Kenny was doing in Japan. That was the whole point why he came to America was to get away from New Japan and to start fresh and to do all of this and I'm watching the first vignette of him literally touring Japan so uh, you're not doing a very good job of that uh, <laughs> but um, I, I do believe that the stories oh my god the stories are just so incredible of where they're going and how they're, they're they're just going so far and above and beyond of everything that they wanted to do that I could just tell that it's literally everything that they talked about in the interview process of what you can expect from AW and how you can expect it to all go down and everything like they're just doing literally everything that they talked about. It's an extensive storyline, very very hard thought put into all of it. If something isn't working, we're gonna squash it immediately. We're not just gonna and we're gonna give you a reason for it. We're not just gonna squash it and then just do nothing about it. The brandy went on. Um, went on uh, Brian Alvarez's show, went on Wrestling Reserver last night to do an interview. I, I listened to the whole interview, and it was amazing how she was just very candid about Nightmare Collective and how, dude, it was just something I, I wanted to do something, and it wasn't working. It didn't benefit me. I could see it wasn't benefiting me, and it actually um, wasn't benefiting the talent. And so, therefore, it's a better idea if we just split, and you guys go do your thing, and I'm going to go do mine. And it was cool that we just figured that out rather than trying to draw out a long-winded thing that just didn't make sense. Um, so all of them being so creative, um, sitting down with each other, always talking and trying to come up with the best thing for the wrestling fan of always just doing the best possible job that they possibly can to come up with that and trying to do some service for themselves because of the, yeah, there are a bunch of outlaws that are maybe trying to do a little bit of service for themselves. And I also see that as what the hell would you do if you owned your, your own company? Why, what the hell would you want to come up with and why the hell wouldn't you actually want to put yourself over on television but also at the same time put other people over and put your friends and put other and put mm -hmm. others over in the same process so I think it's wonderful what they're getting to do they get their service out of it they get service themselves and they also have a big platform for a whole bunch of other people that never really got a chance and which by the way I also I, I do agree with that I think Sonny Kiss and um, and, 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 and I think um, oh Rose. my god yeah Nyla Rose um, really deserve um, a better opportunity. Um, I believe that they are, and at the exact same time, I also do hear them on the microphone, and I hear that they really, really, really genuinely suck on the microphone, like both of them pretty equally. Um, so they have a lot of room to grow in terms of that. They definitely have a lot of room to grow in terms of that, but I love the ring work. I think they're, I think they're awesome in terms of what they do. Right. Well, to counteract that point real quick, Sammy Guevara sucks on the mic, but yeah, he's in the inner nope. circle. And that's it. And you're absolutely he's a right. Sexy you're Spanish God. Chris wow, Jericho. that just came out of nowhere. Sexy Spanish God, wow. Oh, dude. I, and one and one thing, I, one other thing, I do want to talk about. We didn't more on that. We we Sammy Guevara does really suck on a microphone. We didn't get an opportunity to touch on God, touch on any ROH stuff. But one thing I do want to shout out is good on ROH for giving an opportunity to a guy like PCO, the age yeah. he was at, to don the don the belt, run with it, and that's huge. And I think that's a credit to ROH because there's another company again. They they got a lot of flack for that. There was a lot of negative and positive comment. It's more positive than negative, but there's still those naysayer keyboard warriors out there. Yeah. But to give your title to a man close to his 50s or I think in his 50s, that's an accomplishment. But that's an accomplishment to him because the great shape, phenomenal shape he's in, and the matches he's had since he donned that strap, i got to say they've been fucking impressive. They've been Seriously? very, very mm -hmm. impressive. So good on PCO, good on you know Villain Enterprises, good on uh, everything. I kind of like the way they're setting it up. Right now. They're... I don't really see uh, Marty Scroll, and this is coming from a Marty Scroll guy. I don't see him beating Nick Aldis, 
but I do see uh, Villain Enterprise is kind of collapsing. And Marty Scroll versus PCO, ROH, man, shut up and take my money. I just love the way you're building it. I understand it. And I want to say to everybody behind the scenes at ROH, thank you. Because I cannot wait for PCO versus Marty Scroll when it, it happens. And it will happen. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, and then straight up, last little tidbit to add to Villain Enterprises. Um, they're they're doing probably the hardest work of or besides Allison Kay and Nick Aldis right now. They're literally out there doing the hardest work of anybody in this business, making so many other people, but also bringing back a territory feel that nobody has felt in any kind of capacity since whatever, since that many years ago, since like it feels like a hundred years ago at this point. So essentially the work that those, that all four of them combined, that those people are out there doing is absolutely incredible. And the fact that, um, and the, the, the fact that all of these companies are working together all simultaneously and all on the uprise together like that, because of those individual, those set individuals out there putting in all the time and miles and everything like that. It's absolutely incredible. So yeah, hope everybody really truly understands how much work Villain Enterprises, Allison Kay, and Nick Aldis are really doing to put everybody cohesively on the map together. Well, and that's it. That's all the time we got for today, man. This was a great one. I knew this was going to be a good idea. I'm glad we did it. I'm super happy that we were able to get you guys back in the studio for one night only. It was great to get the unholy trinity or the holy trinity. I can't remember what we used Whatever to call it. it the, trifecta. the trifecta. It was great to get the trifecta back together for one night only. As always, I am your host, your boy, George Mackay. Don't forget to tune in next week. Next week's episode, I'm going to give you a hint. Should I give him a hint? Maybe a little one. A little one? What do you think? Should I give him a hint? Yeah, yeah. Give him a little... Give him a little, little, little Absolutely not. You have to follow the <laughs> socials. Everybody knows the rule. You got to follow the socials. Do it always. As always, I'm your host, your boy, George Bakai. Steve the Animal Mitchell, everybody. The voice, Michelle Arujo. And that's it. Straight Talk Wrestling, back to the old school days for one night only, is in the can. As always, guys, peace, love, and wrestling. And I will see you next week. Peace. Thank you for listening. Tune in next week for another episode on Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. Also follow us on Facebook at Straight Talk Wrestling, on Instagram at Straight Talk Wrestling, and on Twitter at underscore Straight Talk. And for all our merchandise, you can search us on ProWrestlingTees.com. Oh.